Welcome to another edition of the Magpie Circle. Part two, the new manager has been appointed. Uh, Record-breaking show last night. Uh, we're joined. No substitutions. Uh, unchanged. No squad rotation. Right on cue. Uh, running out of the dressing room last. Beth Curzon. That's a good fine, that there. is, by the way. That's good timing. That's that. That was good timing. But there's that match way, recently that they started with 10 men, do you remember? And there was someone ran out about a minute into the second half. because they had oh, That was Rule Fox, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure that was Rule Fox at Spurs. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you yeah. just got there in time, Beck. You just got there in time. Great <laughs> to see everyone. Great to see you, Les. Great to see you, Lee. Clearly, we are going to be analysing tonight the appointment of Ian Birchnell. We kind of looked back yesterday. Now we're going to look forward to the future, the dawn of a new era. The king is dead. Long live the king. Let's just rattle into some observations straight away from you guys. Um, and then we'll go for your thoughts, uh, panel. Steve Cartwright, do you think the owners had this in mind when they took over and it was always planned? Joe Warren, feeling optimistic with what's been said by the owners, but I guess we will just have to see what happens. Uh, SK, very good appointment, exactly the type of person we need. The owners have their own idea of football and Ardy was not providing that. Attacking football has to be the way for the players we have. James Spring, press conference, the usual big club, big history, great potential, great fans, long-term project chat. He'll either take us to Wembley in his first game or suffer our most embarrassing loss. Nick Goring, Saturday will be interesting to see how the players react. Jürgen Halligan got a lot to live up to. Neil's final record played 108, 146, drawn 29, lost 33, a 42.6% win rate. James Spring again. My worry is if this money ball approach doesn't work, Will the owners lose interest? Lots of talk about a Brentford or Barnsley model, but we're not Brentford or Barnsley. This is non-league. Stephen Orton, what worries me is the transfer policy. The chairman and the manager will be casting their nets over Europe. Um, but does it change with Brexit? Um, uh, Mr Neil H.O., uh, Lee Hare, we couldn't have had black box instead like the manager interviews earlier. I'll show you understand that one. Um, Paul Swift, I know instantly. what he's on about. I know what he's on about. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's because I had my um, black screen up when I was asking the question. And that's because my hair looked even worse than what it did here. I just decided I'm not showing the whole world. It was being broadcast live on YouTube and there's loads of people on it. I've just thought I'm not taking the risk. So I left it. It was up here. It was up here. It was like a tree. Well, you've got your Alice band tonight, so we're all right. Richard Hawksworth, such a, as fast as you guys send these questions and observations in, they move one up, so it's quite hard to read them. So apologies. Uh, Richard Hawksworth, I see this as a massive gamble. No experience in England. I'm also very sceptical about this constant reference to the long term. We need out of this league ASAP. Um, now, if we go, if my son can just scroll right to the top, I want to fire one question at you, and it and, and it's both funny, but it's kind of an interesting one, uh, and I can't quite see it at the minute. But the gist is, um, here we go, Philip Squire. This could be our Jamie Fullerton moment or our Neil Warnock moment. Which is it to be? They're kind of the polar opposites of people at the minute. Um, I think this is a. a a bold, creative appointment. It's certainly a brave appointment to make this decision now rather than leaving Neil in situ. Um, I think also this is a new model for Notts County Football Club, isn't it? And this is clearly a model that our owners were always looking to bring in and appoint a manager ultimately that would totally buy into the philosophy and the approach. Neil was someone they inherited and gave a decent stint at. Some would say not long enough. Others would say too long. Um, but this is kind of the new breed of football manager. You know, the new approach. Beth, you're by far the youngest on our panel tonight. What do you make of this? Um, I'm actually quite excited now that I've um, watched all the interviews. Um, I watched the one this morning, the one earlier, um, both with the owners and uh, the head coach himself. And I think the more I listen and hear and read about him, I'm actually quite excited. 
Um, he clearly buys into the same approach as the brothers do at the top, which is can only be a good thing. Um, he does have rave reviews from previous coaches, um, previous players, which can, again, only be a good thing. I quite like the way he spoke. I like some of the issues that he raised and I like that he did have somewhat of a short-term achievable target and he did mention that going up is ultimately the goal. Um, so I don't agree with any comments in terms of it's just about the long term. I think it's an important to consider uh, important things down the line, but I think he's very on the ball with what needs to be done here and now, looking at the players, um, what needs to be worked on and... Um, I'm I'm quite excited about what's to come to us. I think we've got to accept. Oh, we might be losing Beth there. That's, That's a what's shame. Happened, and I think people have generally. Um, I was, this is the. Oh, am I back? You're back. Am I back? You're back. You're back, Beth. I'm having internet problems. I apologise. Um, but yes. So I think we need to we need to buy into him now as well. He he's ultimately the new head coach, um, and I'm quite excited to see what happens. So, okay, um, Leslie, um, the old Notch County Network has already uh, been incommunicado. Um, you've had a very positive reference about Ian from one of your old Notch County teammates. Tell all. Yeah, I got a call this afternoon from David Smith. Um... I think a lot of the older supporters will remember little Dave uh, live wire in midfield uh, before he moved on to Torquay. Uh, he's now got a pub down in Plymouth and um, I go and see him from time to time. His son, uh, Ben, is um, a manager enjoying um, his time in football in uh, Scandinavia. Not sure which country. But, uh, he's rung his dad this afternoon and said, what an appointment um, that is for Knotts. He is a top, top man. Um, and listening to uh, his interview this morning with um, the media manager, Nick Richardson, it was um, all good positive stuff, talking about making the players better, a little bit better. He's obviously not going to have much time on the training ground, um, you know, with matches Saturday, Tuesday. So it's going to be very difficult. But um, um, what will be, will be. We've got to get to get behind him and um, wish him all the best and I uh, hope he succeeds. Lee, um, you were probably closer to Neil than any of us here. Um, you, 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 you liaise with him on a regular basis. How do you, how difficult a challenge in the short term do you think Ian has? Because clearly these are not his players, but he's expected to get instant results between now and the end of the season. I think that was one of the first questions I asked him, actually, was was about the immediate challenges that he faces, just because the fixture list is so brutal. I mean, for any new manager coming in, you want that sort of bedding in time. It'd be nice just to have a Saturday to Saturday week so you can get on the training ground and, you know, work on a few things, and make little adjustments here and there. But he's not, you know, you look at it, he's not, never really going to have enough time to do that because training sessions before a game are going to be light. So then you play on the Tuesday. They'll probably have the day off on the Wednesday. You probably only full day you're going to get is a Thursday. And then it's another light session. Then you're back in action again on the Saturday. So week to week, it's going to be quite difficult, I think, in the short term, in, in trying to implement any kind of big philosophies. I think what he'll, he'll try to do is try to make short and subtle adjustments. And I don't think really... Um, I don't think it will. The, the, the philosophy that Ian has in mind will stray too much from what Neil's principle was. I think they'll still be a possession-based football team. So I don't think that we're going to see a vast change in in style in that respect. I think the adjustments that we'll see is in terms of what he said today was trying to stop them being risk averse and being a bit more on the front foot. So, um, but I do think that does present a, a few challenges because the fixtures come up so thick and fast. You know what it's like, players get tired, injuries. Um, so I'm fascinated to see how he's going to deal with that because he's really he's been dropped in a deep end a little bit because, you know, you're six in the table, the fans are expecting results and he's got no time. I feel a little bit sorry for him, really, in that respect. So, um, But listen, it's a long-term project. I don't think we'll see anything major happen until the summer, really, when obviously there'll be a few players out of contract and that will give him the chance to, to make his own imprint on the squad. 
few more thoughts and we'll, we'll go next again to Beth. Uh, Steamy 109. I think it's a gamble, but a calculated one. Got to trust the owners as they've been very good so far. Paul Hawksworth, without strengthening the forward line, we will not move forward. Um, K. Oliver Ramsden, what does Lee think the reaction of the players will be to the new manager? Any issues? We'll come on to that. Um, Richard Hawksworth, the big philosophy is the philosophy is the philosophy. The big question, I should say, is the philosophy of the brothers suitable to getting us out of this league? Um, a coach doesn't necessarily become a good manager, says PJ Defiant. Steve Silver, interesting new appointment, much better than appointing household name. Um, listen to the interview earlier, very interesting. Dale Pikett, the way the new man says he wants to play total football, do you think this can be achieved to get us out of this league? Um, uh, we fly EMA, uh, not flying much at the minute. Some people are panicking too much about Ian being a coach, not a manager. Just because he's a coach doesn't mean he won't be involved in key decisions. Keep the faith. Paul Swift, football radar changes the game when it comes to coaching slash management. Beth, you obviously play uh, in, a, in, in a current professional football environment where there are probably as many, if not more, head coaches than managers. Do we read too much into this demarcation of a title? I think people are um, reading too much into it, I must admit. I think, like you said, um, I think he will have input on key decisions. I think, judging by the interviews with him and the brothers, I think there's going to be a lot of liaising between each other it's not going to be a kind of separate matter um i'm excited to see how they work together and clearly he's a he's a guy that fits in with the philosophy of what the the owners want um i have most experience um with head coaches so i you know i don't see much of a of a it's not it's not a shock to me um so i've i've not been one of the people we've done to it, but i think some people and understandably so are doing because it's a different style of of you know running running a club um a few years ago it was it was straight manager um come in get things done um, and obviously now we're speaking about the scandinavian approach and things like that and it is spreading worldwide um and i think we've got to accept it i think there will be success in it um but i do think yeah in relation to your question people could be reading a little bit too much into it i think um he's there to get the job done and i'm excited to see his hands-on approach as, as a coach. Um, I think I saw earlier that you were retweeting one or two um, of Ian's uh, coaching videos as well. Yes. He spoke yeah. today, didn't he, about working with players on the training ground, improving players. This is very much more a modern approach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I retweeted one, actually. It was a, a snippet of, um, I think, maybe like a youth session. I like his hands-on approach. I like the way he coaches. It's, it's something that would respond well with me as a player if I had that. I've experienced that kind of coach, um, judging on that. And I like the way that he spoke about using the players that we already have to get more out of them. I have said before, we might need a couple more players up front for sure. Um, but I'm interested to see how he's going to use the likes of Enzio. Um, maybe Ruben Rodriguez kind of work on these players to assist Wooten up top a bit more because there's it's clear that something's got to change. So I'm interested to see his ideas. He mentioned a few times he's a fresh pair of eyes. He wants to get into the details first rather than change a hell of a lot that's going on because we have good players. Um, so I think the, the thing I'm most interested in in seeing is how he's going to work with the midfield, um, maybe the formation a little bit, how to get that bit more out of players. And, and, you know, based on a couple of the videos I've seen him talking and he's quite heavy on the CDM role, um, and you know where where Doyle might be able to fit into that role a bit more. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm a lot more positive than I was last night about it anyway, having done a lot more research. So, okay, um, Martin Herson, does he come in and adapt his style to suit the players we've got? Or does he tell the players this is the new style of play and get the players to adapt to new roles? Steve Cartwright, do you think they will? draw a line under this season or will promotion still be the aim nick goring you say he has little time i'm sure he's been watching for from afar for a number of weeks and will know the key areas he needs to address and players already in mind uh gav valance good luck ian and mo i hope it puts an end to the years of recruiting senior pros from divisions above 
looking for a last payday. Paul Smith, I'd still eat a Jaffa cake, bear with me, irrespective whether it's called a biscuit or a cake. I'm not bothered what title our new leader has. Les, here's one for you. The, the inference today, the indication was we're going with what players we have at this moment in time. Is this squad good enough to get promotion this season? Well, first and foremost, those players would have been going in the dressing room, arriving at the ground today, a um, little uncertain as to what's going on. Uh, was there, is there a new guy in place? And uh, I've obviously met with him and he will have uh, told them all. Uh, I would imagine that um, they're all starting from scratch again. So some that maybe thought they should have been in the team or haven't been, um, that's going to give a little G up to. And those that have probably been in the team uh, on a regular basis, it, they've also got another little kick up the bum. So they've all got to show the new manager what they're capable of doing. Uh, and I don't think initially that he will change um, tactics or get involved in too much of that. He'll be um, looking to put his arm around each player, give them a G up and turn them out there and hope they can perform and then take it step by step. Um, from what you've seen, Les, is there enough there or do you think as a new manager, he would be wanting to bring some fresh new faces in given that our, the transfer deadline has now been extended by the best part of them. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure the, the, the owners um, have seen the matches as well. And um, personally, I don't think we've uh, replaced um, Dennis or Thomas. You know, there's, what, 25 plus goals between them there. Uh, Jimmy Knowles, we said last night, um, Lee said that uh, Jimmy Knowles was brought in as a youngster or hopefully he could mature and, and get some game time, you know, towards the end of the season. Um, he has done really well at times. Come on, he, he looks like he knows where the ball's going to drop and he can stick it in. But, um, I'm not quite sure that he's ready yet to, to go alongside Kyle. Um, so I'm sure that the, there must be some thoughts going along um, looking for somebody to play alongside Kyle Wooten. We are short in that uh, in that area, I think. OK, um, Mr. Neil, uh, I hear lots about how this new manager is a good coach. Will he understand the National League, how it works and how physical it is in comparison to European football? Uh, Magpies says could turn out to be the National League Nagelsmann. Well, there we go. That's not putting too much pressure on him, is it? Um, and Matt Ben Notts, Saturday, how should they treat it? Strong team or the fringe players as previous rounds or a mixture? Um, I want to drill down now, Lee, into um, a lot was said today about this appointment is for the long term as well as the short term and stability. I, mean, I think Beth used earlier um, promotion is the ultimate target. Um, how important is it that it's the instant target as well? Um, good question. Um... I don't think anybody, when this decision was made, was automatically going to go throw promotion out the window. So, you know, I, I still suspect that with over 20 games of the season left to play and with the squad that everybody says is the best in the league, then I presume everybody is expecting um, the club to push for promotion if it becomes available. But for me, it's there's a lot of work to do. I still... I agree with Les. I don't. I, I still don't see where or how that the club are going to solve the problems up front. The goals have been a long-standing problem. Uh, Carl looked for me on Tuesday. Looked tired. I think he needs a rest. Um, but they, they've not been able to rest him because, as we've debated numerous times before, that you know there's nobody really in there. You can trust to fill the void that he would leave. You know, in terms of the goals he scores. So. Um, I think there still needs to be a couple of areas addressed in the squad. Um, I, I do worry about the wide areas, um, but but whether they can go and do it this year. I mean, we asked the question of the owners today whether it was still on the agenda, and they they said if it presents itself, then yes. But they can't expect it. That's what they said, you know, they, they they can't expect promotion, which is exactly the same line 
they said before the, the start of the season, you know, we'd like promotion, but we can't expect it. It's one spot and obviously another another club goes up through the playoffs. But I think the, the big concern for me is if not don't get out this year, um, is that if you look at some of the teams who are still down there, like your Stockports, like your Rexhams, if they don't go up, you know, Stockport will have a real go again next year. Wrexham will do the same under the new owners there. Then you've got the, the clubs coming down from League Two who will have the parachute payments. They'll want to get straight back up. So I can actually see it being even more competitive next year. So I think if the chance presents itself and they've got the ability to do it and they can sort the squad out and the, fix the... Oh, I mean, listen, he might come in and fix everything and we start winning games 4 or 5 nil every week. But, I mean, that's obviously fantasy. It's not going to happen, but he might make us a little bit more, um, carry a bit more bite in terms of goals. But I, I still think, for me, I think when he perhaps sits down and addresses the squad, he'll find quickly that he's probably short of one or two players that, that can really make a difference in the top end of the pitch. Seth, same, same question. Ultimate ambition, instant ambition to get up this year. Does it become harder each year we stay in the National League? I think Beth is... Sorry, was that... Oh, right. Sorry, I thought he was asking me, Paul. Sorry. Sorry. I'm back. I think my internet... You're back. No, I'm back. back again. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if you heard the question, Beth, but no, I didn't. I'm just exploring this because I think it's an interesting point. Yeah. Um, the ultimate ambition you mentioned earlier is getting mm -hmm. promoted. Yeah. Counterbalanced against the instant ambition to get promoted. Notts County have not been out of the playoffs virtually all season. Mm -hmm. How important to get up this season, does it actually become more difficult with each passing season to get promoted? I believe so, yes. I think, um, obviously, the, obviously um, like Ian said, the current situation is that we really want to get up. But I think um, I think I caught a little bit of what Lee said. And, and you know, some of the teams that will be coming down um, this season or, you know, depending on what happens, it's going to make the league next year a lot a lot harder for me. And I think mentally, um, I think you mentioned like last night, um, the the, the knock-on effect it has losing um, playoffs or not getting that playoff spot. And I think for a club that deserves to be and has the potential to be higher, the knock-on effect maybe on the players and the fans on the club in general is a difficult one to overcome. That is football. Um, but I, I think, yeah, it can't be underestimated how much harder it, it might become to go back up after another season. It, you know, it, it's almost another knock. But um, with the challenges that are going on, it's more than feasible that we don't make it. So um, I can see kind of both sides, really. But but yeah, I do I do believe that it would make it even more difficult if, should we not go up this season, yeah. OK, um, just a quick pause there that uh, you may be able to see or you will be able to see a red button on your screen. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, if you could please subscribe, it will give you a better user experience as you watch them. Entirely free, just press that red button on your screen. Les, same question to you. Ultimate ambition of going up against instant ambition to get up. That's a difficult one because um, I was very fortunate um, in my career that uh, I didn't have a relegation. Uh, so I, I can only assume that once you have been relegated, there is a, a mental scar um, in, in, in the makeup and it becomes very, very difficult as we've seen with lots of clubs that's got relegated, not just in the National League, but in other leagues as well. Um, and getting that positivity back again to 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 drive on is um is a key thing if if we can finish the season um not going up but um with it with a hell of a good run then to some degree i would think that you take that on to the following season and a couple of improvements here and there and you can hit the ground running um but if it's not good and it's gone the other way, then, yeah, it, it must be very, very difficult. Leighton Orient found it difficult. York City, they even went down further, didn't they? Stockport, they went down further still. Um, so it is a very, very difficult one. Um, 
but the successful teams coming out of this league as well have, have, have shown uh, League Two and League One that they can compete and um, and, and get promoted. So um, the standard of the National League is certainly um, getting better, whether it's because of the relegated clubs, whether it's be because of the coaching methods, manager, I don't know, but... Um, um, it's not as bad as people say it is when you watch other matches as well. Is it, I know you want to labour the point. See, I think it's a very interesting debate. Um, we, we have been saying collectively for weeks and months, Neil Ardley has to make the playoffs. Yeah, has to make the playoffs. With this group of squad, there's no way he can't not make the playoffs. Now, I suspect with my PR, PR hat and football management hat down the years that the club are just kind of like trying to dampen the expectation because clearly you get a new manager coming in at this time and he's instantly got to win more games than he loses and he's instantly got to make, ensure not stay in the playoffs. That's putting more pressure on him. But equally, you know, I, I would like to think that we should not be writing this season off. I really don't think we should somehow be saying because the manager has changed that we kind of, well, it's, it's not such a big deal if we don't make the playoffs because we're planning for the long term. The ultimate reality of Notts County in the National League is that every season, at the end of the season, there's a, there's a rainbow and there's a pot of gold. And that pot of gold is promotion to the football league. And you cannot not have Notts County's ambition and desire and realistic aim to get that pot of gold. I, I, don't, I, I don't think a fan base would support that. I don't think a fan base would support that. At the end of the day, we are sixth in this league with a very strong squad of players, irrespective of whether they're the best, second best or third best. In the way last year, we had a gold. The best chance we had of going up was based on 90 minutes against Harrogate. We didn't turn up. We blew it. Okay. The best chance of us going up out of the National League, from my mind, is not as rebuilding a squad in a in 18 months' time, two years' time, as part of a long-term plan. Our best chance of getting into the National League is getting as many points as possible in the next two and a half months. We've already done over half of the work to get into these playoffs. So for personally... I don't think in any way, shape or form, uh, uh, ambitions or expectations should be lowered. You know, there is an argument that says if, you're, if you've made a decision to change the manager at this stage of the season, you should be raising the bar for more likelihood of reaching the playoffs. Lee? Well, it'd be... It'd be a shame given that they've got into such a great position. I know they're 14 points behind the leaders, but, you know, they're in the playoffs. Um, like you said, they've got a good squad, uh, which I still think, is, as I just said, I still think it's two or three players short. Um, but, yeah, I agree. I, don't, I think you can't really write this season off. They've, done, they've worked so hard to get in there. And I'm sure the players will be talking about that amongst themselves. I'm sure they'll be, listen, we've got ourselves into a great position let's do our best to get get out of the league this year um i think what i would be aiming for i don't think they'll win the title i think that's gone beyond them but i think the next best thing that they have to aim for now is either second or third if they're going to get into the playoffs because you want that home game don't you, you just want that one game otherwise you finish sixth or seventh you've got two games to play and as you, as we saw it's away from home as well um so I think given how hard they've worked, the players have worked to get into this position without their best player for much of the campaign, you know, without the likes of Wes Thomas, they've worked so hard. And it would be a shame for them to sort of almost, like you say, for people just to write it off and say, OK, well, you know, let's rebuild again in the summer. Because um, then ultimately, what would be the, what would be the point in making the change? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So, so I don't. I, I I think it's really interesting. I mean, it has. I mean, the change has come at a real crucial time in the season, and like we've said before, it's there's so many games coming up that 
in terms of the top seven ambitions, you really got to be trying to hit the ground running, as, as difficult as that sounds. But obviously, a new manager comes in, new ideas, little tinkers here and there. It's, I think, you know, this is what we were saying last night. It is a bit, it is a bit of a gamble, but we'll just wait and see how, how it all unfolds. Um, Beth, um, we had a question earlier, which I think is an interesting one. It's a, it's an FA Cup trophy semi final on um, Saturday. Um, so a new manager in his first game can secure a passage to Wembley. Doesn't happen very often. Um, where do you counterbalance FA trophy success, league success? What does the what does the head coach potentially do Saturday? Does he put out his strongest available team? Does he rest a few players? Any any thoughts? Um, I think my thoughts are kind of in line with actually something a comment that he made earlier in an interview, and he said uh, once he was asked what his plan is going forward, he said today he was going to have a bit of a, a meeting with the staff and talk about what to do in the training pitch tomorrow, and then going into Saturday's game, I think it's quite evident that his aim is to not try and change too much. Um, he mentions two or three times in both interviews that he wants kind of resilient, brave, attacking, positive play, which I think that's something we 100% need right now. Um, it'll be exciting to see what kind of little tweaks he makes um, in response to that. I, I can't predict what he's going to do, or, you know, if he's going to change the formation or, or the lineup. Um, I can't imagine he's going to change too much, like he said, and I think... I think his message going into it is going to be um, you kind of play play to your ability, be brave on the ball. Um, he mentioned a couple of times, and I, and I agree with him, the kind of the previous games, we've we've sort of found our feet in the second half once we're 1-0 down, 2-0 down, because is it a psychological thing where we think, well, we've got nothing to lose now, we're 2-0 down, and we go out and do it. And he said, no, I want to try and find them, help them find the feet and be able to have the ability and the, the bravery to do that from, from the get-go. So hopefully him coming in now um, and the sessions between now and Saturday and kind of the pre-game talk is going to inspire some of the players to not only want to prove, maybe prove hardly wrong, maybe some of the ones that haven't been getting a game so much lately, um, but want to prove themselves to, you know, to the new manager um, and show what they can do and highlight that, their, their ability. So I'm excited to see what happens, yeah. Uh, Brian Morfish says... Um... Manager has to start with his best team on Saturday. He won't want to start out with a loss. Um, uh, we fly EMA. Am I right in thinking there's about 40 to 50 points still to play for this season? That should give us a boost instead of saying there's X amount of games left. Um, uh, Paul Smith, reflecting on yesterday and today's announcements, I've been impressed how classily this has been done and presented. We have truly fantastic owners, and the new manager seems to fit that same mould. Les, players' perspective. You will have been in um, quite a few dressing rooms. Change of manager. What goes through the players' mind? Do they find another 10%? Do they think might not be in the team now or how, how does a player in that dressing room view a new manager coming in that you've got to lift your game when you get picked when that shirt is there and you're wearing it you're going out there and doing your utmost best um to keep to keep it um th there was no squad rotation in the days that i played so it was important that you you performed because um, the wage at the end of the week was heavily dependent on appearance and um, any any sort of bonus money. So, um, I, and and we, we we've talked about all sorts of issues here. Make no mistake, whatever team Ian selects on Saturday, he will be selecting for that team to win the game. He will want to win every game. He'll be also thinking about Tuesday night and Saturday after that. But he will want to win every game and he'll be expecting the players to perform to win every game also. And as I say, the players will be, they shouldn't, I shouldn't say this, but there'll be probably an extra percentage that they'll give to try and show the new manager how good they are. Um, I want to talk now about um, the philosophy um, that our new owners are bringing to the club. Um, we've often spoken more or less from day one about dumbing it down to a, a money ball approach. 
we spoke about last night about Barnsley and Brentford would be successful prop proponents of this strategy in the championship. And I think it likely in the coming years, more clubs will go um, down this route. Um, you know, I, for one, don't have a problem with, with, with this strategy. If you look historically at Notts County over the past five, ten years, um, we've hardly ever sold a player for money, hardly ever sold a player. Um, we have signed an awful lot of experienced players on short-term contracts. By that, I mean one year or two year. In many cases, those players have ended up playing five or six games. You pay top dollar for more senior pros. Um, the opportunities for our younger players coming through our system have been relatively limited. And of course, there will be a debate about whether those players are good enough to play. Um, but if you've got a 32-year-old that plays five games a season for you, he's probably on five times the salary of a 19-year-old that plays five games uh, for you. Um, but nevertheless, this is a this is a big departure for Notts County historically, in that it would appear that the recruitment is now not going to be handled directly and solely by the manager. Um, Lee, what's your take on this? On the recruitment model? Yeah. Um, well, we've seen it's had some success so far, haven't we, with Callum Roberts? I mean, that was that was a signing, I mean, which was unbelievable. I mean, I don't think anybody could have anticipated the impact he would have had on, on Notts team when he came in from Clive Spartans. He was literally, we knew he'd scored goals in the National League North and he'd created a lot. But we was always thinking, well, it's a big step up. We, he's obviously a, a, a great coaching at Newcastle, etc. But that was a signing which is perfect of the money ball approach. Somebody who adds value to the team and instantly not paid whatever fee for him. I don't think it was that uh, a great deal. But instantly he's become, you know, you're talking 250, 500 grand players straight off the bat, given what he's done for, for not since coming into the team. So... From that aspect, it works. But if you look at some of the signings they made this year, the likes of Eli Sam, who was obviously put through the data. I mean, I remember Neil saying that he, he was presented with these videos of the players and he had to do, go through them and then pick ones that he liked. And then if it tallied up with the owners who they liked, um, that hasn't really paid off, has it? I mean, Eli Sam's come in. He's been very hit and miss, makes the... Hard look incredibly easy and the easy look incredibly hard. Ruben Rodriguez has, has come in, fits and starts, showed flashes of quality, but not consistent. The only one really that's showed what value the money ball approach had has been Callum. Um, the rest of them have been, you know, when Neil built the squad first time around before the Eastleigh game of last season, he obviously went and got experienced players, the likes of Connell Rawlinson, Richard Brindley, um, Jamie McCrory, you know, players players of that ilk. Um, so I do think it works. But again, I, I don't think you can overload your team with these players. There has to be a happy medium. Um, and I think that's going to be the challenge going forward that, you know, I don't think you will get out of the National League, and I'm happy to be proved wrong. I don't think you will get out of the National League by playing a team full of 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds. I just, I just don't think it's doable. If you look at the teams that, that have gone up historically, you know, if I look at the Lincoln team that went up under Danny Cowley, it was a good blend of players who had played at the National League level, like Sean Raggett and Sam Hammersham. Um, but up front, they had the likes of Matt Reed, and I think it was Matt Green, Terry Orkridge. You know, it was a, it was a good blend, and I think that's what not so much to strive for. While in the process, trying to stick to this model of trying to find a few rough diamonds along the way. Um, do you think there was any potential friction between the pond that Neil Ardley is looking to fish for players and another pond? That the owners with their statistical and European analysis were fishing in? I think there would have been a few trade-offs, undoubtedly. Um, 
but Neil was a very amicable gentleman, wasn't he? I don't think he was the sort of bloke to go and round start throwing teacups if he couldn't get his own way. Um, I mean, Casper Sloth. I mean, I, I, I absolutely have no doubt in my mind that that was not a Neil Ardley signing. 100%. And obviously, Casper came in, got injured in pre season. You know, he was gone within a month. And it was a bizarre signing straight off the bat. You know, I ain't kicked a ball in six months. So I think there will have been some trade offs, but I think Neil wanted to buy into the owner's, owner's model. Sucked it up and obviously, like he did with Ruben and, and, and Eli, went through the videos, picked the players that he felt could do a job. Owners agreed. It was uh, around around the table, a universal agreement. They got him in. Um, so, friction, no. Maybe a couple of trade-offs, certainly yes. Okay. Um, Paul Swift says, um, Neil didn't sign any of the foreign lads. Nick Goring, we bought the cloud. Is on the cloud and he did nothing. Um, what do we think, Beth, of, of, of the model whereby the manager now certainly does not have sole control, let's put it like that, of who we buy? Um, I think it's a difficult one. I think we're going to have to play it out and see how it happens. I think whether we like it or not, that is the model we have got, so we have to put faith in in that. Um, I agree with Lee in saying that, in my opinion, um, a squad to go up is a squad that's a mix. If that's going to be, um, if if what you're going to do is approach players, the younger players, based on kind of a, a you know smaller talent pool, um, based on video footage and stats and stuff, that's absolutely fine. When it works, like Carl Roberts, um, but I can also see the flip side that maybe Eli Simon is, is a player that was watched for a while, and you can get all the stats. And watch all the all the footage you want of a player, and they can look fantastic. But you can't predict the performances they're gonna they're gonna produce. Um, so unfortunately, I think it's the way in football that sometimes you are gonna bring players in, and they're not gonna perform the way you wanted. But I do think it's a difficult one when a manager might want a bit more control in that area. Um, obviously, we don't know too much about Ian in the way that he likes to have that helping hand in selecting players. But from by all accounts, you know, again looking at his interviews, he quite likes. Um, the approach where he has a team around him to to make those decisions for him. Um, he mentioned a couple of times about the importance of using stats when when selecting players. So clearly that's a big a big part of his history in football. Um, so clearly he's a manager that's comfortable with the current model, um, but obviously not all managers are. Um, so I think it's it's important to get a balance, like we said. Um, and I think it's just it's just that's the model and that's what we've got to accept. So we'll see how it plays out. I think my problem with this modern money ball approach is like Beth just said, uh, you can get clips and make players look like world beaters. And my argument now with the way the modern game has become, I don't see managers now going to watch players for 90 minutes. You know, I remember back when I was in Lincoln, I'd go and watch a non-league game. I'd cover Gainsborough or something like that. And Keith Alexander, he'd be there watching players. Just be there. 90 minutes. You know, every Tuesday. Works so hard. But you don't get that anymore. Technology has made people lazy. And unfortunately, with the wizardry you can get, you can make a player look a world beater. And you get him in through the door and you're just like, wow. You know, if someone clipped me up from five aside, I'm pretty sure I would have got a trial. <laughs> Um, no, not really. But, um, but you know what I mean. You can make anybody. Look, you can make you can make anybody look good on a video. But I don't think now with Y Scout and Scout Seven and all that, all that, I don't think you get a true representation of what a player is like across a ninety minutes. Does he do the simple things? What is his what are his runs like off the ball? What's his attitude like throughout the ninety minutes? Does he work hard for ninety minutes? You know those things and. Uh, and that's it's not just a problem for Knots, but I just think a, a, a problem for football in general. I mean, a couple of points before we go to Les. Um, I I think listening to the various interviews, and there's plenty of them I've listened to today, Ian did make the specific point that he likes to talk to the players that he's planning to sign, understand about their character, um, their mentality, which I think is very important. And that, that would certainly suggest to me that he puts emphasis on man management. What are these players like? He said, he, I think he 
I think he said he he wanted to understand their ambition, um, their, their approach. So clearly, I don't think he just wants to look purely at statistical data. He wants to understand the person inside, which, which, which I think is important. I think the other point here, if we think back to last night, part one, uh, with the departure of Neil, we were all speaking about the, the importance of the owners setting the philosophy, the owners setting the strategy, and then recruiting a manager or a head coach that was best suited to deliver and work within that philosophy and strategy. I'm sure out there now, a lot of our fans would, if they were owners of a club, would have different views about what that strategy is. Some would say the manager's got to see every player five times, all the rest of it, etc. Others would say, oh, you can do it all off video. Um, but the reality is, Alexander and Christoph, they've earned the right to run this football club how they see fit. You know, they put as I understand this, the best part of £4 million pounds in to buy the club off Alan Hardy. OK? And they bought that lock, stock and barrel. Not bought 20% of it. Not, not bought 40%. They bought 100% of this football club. That gives them the right to introduce whatever philosophy or strategy they deem to be correct. And the reality is, Knots have gone down systems, experienced players and all the rest of it over many years. And we went down, not having a money ball approach, out of the Football League for the first time in history with about 38 professionals. So clearly that model hasn't worked for us in the past that we've adopted. So, so I absolutely think the new owners um, absolutely right. And they, they clearly identified a person who they think is going to fit into their strategy and their philosophy. Yeah, there's not, we've not gone from a knee jerk. You know, we had Sean Derry, Ricardo Moniz, and everything's up in the air and all the rest of it under the trues. You know, most people would say, cool, blimey, what's going on there? So I think they're executing a strategy. We all will debate and discuss whether this strategy will work at national league level. And we hope Ian is the person. To, to, to deliver that. Um, Les, what's your take on this debate? Um, I tend to think back to the years that I played and, and you talk about younger players. Um, nearly every professional player um, in those days was playing first team football at the age of 18. Possibly not doing 40 odd games a season, but he will have made his debut and he will have played. And the key, and you've just touched on it there, was the balance in the squad of players. There was senior players, there was younger players, and there was the kids coming in who got protected and advised by these senior players. Um, so, no, I don't think you can put together um, a, a, a team of inexperienced lads because it just will not work. It, it will not work with the, the situations that uh, arise, the... the um, the inexperience that that, that, you, you, that that you can't, you know, you're under pressure, and how do we deal with this? How in you know, the old, you need the older guys around. So that is 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 key, and that has to be part of the recruitment of the of the squad when you're putting that squad together. Don't get too many of those. Don't get too many of those. You need a balance. So uh, yeah. oh, sorry, go on. sorry, Les, go on. No, you carry on, Lee. Uh, just a great point about young players. It's a great point about Sean Derry, because if you remember that season after the great escape, I think Knotts were about fourth in the league, weren't they? And they yeah. had the likes of Stephen McGoughlin, Louis Lang, um, experienced yeah. lads who'd done well. And then the January window came and they couldn't replace, they had to go back and they ended up replacing him with the likes of uh, Kwame Thomas, Alefe Santos, kids. And in the end, Knotts just literally right. plummeted. Sean Derry um, spoke to me in November. I think we were fifth or sixth in the, the league at that stage. And he says, Les, they've taken uh, recruitment away from me. got this guy, Guy Branson, who's bringing in players. And um, they think we're in a secure position uh, in the league, the owners. And um, we're going to bring in some young youngsters. And a couple of lads came from Derby, didn't they? And, um, uh, uh, and yeah, well... 
it, it just it, it went downwards. Yeah, it just the, the balance wasn't right. I, th I think it's interesting. I, I'm not aware of anyone saying you can only sign players under uh, uh, under a certain age. I think the point I'm trying to make is that the owners are implementing their philosophy. And so they are trying to get round pegs in round holes. And it would appear that Ian is very comfortable with the strategy of the owners working under that understands that and respects that yes Beth? absolutely yeah. one sorry sorry carry on no it's me sorry you, you... I thought you said Beth. It was Beth. Sorry. sorry no problem Beth. i was just gonna say um i do agree with that i think if we can we can argue either either way but he, he you know Ian wouldn't have been bought in if they don't believe the owners don't believe there's going to be some sort of instant impact um and a positive one um yeah there's not much more i can say about it um i do agree with your comments paul about that they they've earned the right to implement their strategy i do believe it i do i don't think they've led us too far wrong you know up till now you know there's been some challenges along the way um but from for other reasons as well um so it's it's kind of a process i think we're going to have to um stick with um and understand that like you said that the, you know the new head coach that's come in is ag agreeing with this model has worked under it for eight years clearly um thinks it's successful so uh, it's a big change but i think we're gonna have to see what the benefits or or the opposite are from it um again i'll stick with the point that i do believe i do believe they they value the older players in the team and i think you know i don't think they'll be ready to kick the experienced ones out or anything like that but i do believe that kind of moving on to the next couple of years and the likes of Doyle might you know the older he's getting and things like that I do believe there's still got to be that mix and I'm hoping it'll stay that way um, but I do agree again that they've bought the club um, and they've invested their time and their money they know what they're talking about and I think we've got to trust in them that these stats in these players are going to going to pay off um, but it's a tough one I think we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to see Let's can, I, can I just come back in there? We do, we're talking about strategy. I'll explain the strategy. The last match that we played at home, uh, was it last year when we won four? Was it Ensley or... Um, Eastley. Eastley. So um, on match days, I have a role. I go around the, um, the, 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 the restaurant and, and talk to the supporters. And there was a table of 10, 10 chaps. And I didn't recognise them. And... Um, I went along and said, hi, guys, you know, are you come to watch the game? And he says, we work for the owner's business. I says, oh, uh, in what capacity? He says, well, the owners have given us a free meal, free day out here. We've all, we were all involved in the Cal Roberts signing. I says, what, all 10 of you? He says, yeah, we, we went and watched him play different matches, all given different jobs to do, check him on his, his running and his tackling, he, all different aspects that were put into the computer that threw out the message that, that, that this guy we should sign. And so I don't see anything wrong with that strategy as long as it is used with the manager. For me, the manager or the head coach will be talking to the owners when, when he settles down and he looks at the squad and if he sees an area that he's not comfortable with, and he says to the owners, we we could do with improving that position there. They can send in the information of all the different players that um, that play that position that are available that maybe they can they can sign and then leave it to the the coach. I think that is the way that it works. Would I be right or would I be wrong? And 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 so there is some input. It, it, to me, it has to, it is key that the the um, head coach has to have input on the signing. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit messy like it did with Sean Derry and the players that came in there. Um, I mean, I mean, we have to remember as well, this is the owner's first foray into owning a football club and the challenges they will, uh, they are being presented with will be absolutely fresh to them. There's no, 
there's no experience there of running a football club. So we're going to have to give them plenty of time as well. We've got, I think, I think sometimes that's a little bit forgotten that these guys, Alexander and Christopher, have done a brilliant job so far. This is still very much a new experience, and they will be learning things every single day: what works, what doesn't work. And it's important that they, as they go along, that, they, that the things that they don't work, they try to eradicate, try to fix. And this is very much a journey. It's very much the beginning of a journey. You know, last year was brilliant because they came in, Neil pretty much built the team, and that was it. They were off and got got to third in the league. But yeah, it's it's still very much it's still very much in the infancy in terms of what their long term ambitions are. And I think you know there are going to be elements along the way that that they that they will find surprising. They might look back and say, "Well, we got that wrong, and we got that absolutely right." So I think you know we have to remember that 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 you know this is still relatively very fresh for them. Um, Dave Woolley says the brothers have every right to bring in their philosophy. But if it ain't working, the fans have the right not to pay to watch, of course. Uh, Mr. Neil, Moneyball was originally brought in to replace a reserve team, which Notts County don't have, with players capable of playing first-team football. It didn't, doesn't rule out signing older players. Um, Killer Klein, it's about using the players in the position that they were re researched in, or that stats mean nothing. I think it's quite an emotive subject, isn't it? You know, recruitment and the manager must sign every player or actually we'll, we'll take an element of that away from him and he will coach players. You know, we get quite hung up about it. Um, you know, I have worked with very, very, very senior managers. And in one case, uh, when he was getting another job, they uh, the board said, yeah, you've got the job, but we're going to call you head coach. He said, OK. I'm not coming. And he goes, what do you mean? You've agreed the money. You've agreed this. You've agreed that. D don't be silly. Head coach. So I'm not coming. If I'm coming, I'm the manager. And he actually threatened to walk away and almost did walk out of the room. And, oh, oh, OK, we'll call you manager if it means that. Much to you. So I think a lot of these attitudes come with, come, come, come with a certain degree of age. Um, and... As always, there is no right way and there is no wrong way. But what I do see here at Knox now is a huge cultural change from how Knox have previously operated. Yes, you're quite right, Les. There have been dalliances where previous owners have got a bit fed up with some of the sign. Oh, we're signing another one. Hang on, we're we'll taking it away from the manager. I think this is a... I think this is a completely different joined up philosophy, which you may or may not buy into. But this is the way our current owners want to do it. And, and I suspect more clubs um, will go about that. For me, the real kind of challenge is how long does it take for that philosophy to switch over? and can you afford to take your eye off the ball of getting out of the National League instantly? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. The reality is that Ian is now under a huge amount of pressure from day one. More pressure than he would have been if he'd come in at the end of the season. Because knots would have either gone up or not gone up. As it is now, everyone is now going to come from a position of what well, we would definitely have got under the playoffs under Neil. That, 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 is how it, that is how it will pan out. Oh, we've definitely done it, definitely done it. So, so instantly, Ian is going to be judged over the next three months by getting Notts County into the playoffs at a minimum. And it's all very well saying you have long-term strategies and all the rest of it. There is, in my opinion, no long-term strategy for Notts County in the National League. There ain't one. It doesn't exist. We as fans would not tolerate it. You know, if we, God forbid, don't make the playoffs and don't start well next season, all the people listening to this right now, ask yourself as fans, we're halfway in October, bottom half. You're happy? You're going to say, yeah, no problem. We all buy into this three-year plan. As fans collectively, we won't. 
we won't. And that, that I think, is a, that's a massive challenge for the club. I understand totally the new culture taking, going a different route because the previous one hasn't worked. You know, we're now in the National League for the first time in our history. So whatever way we've done it for the last 10 years has not worked. I, I just think it is there, there's going to be a lot of pressure in these next set of games, in these next set of games. Um, Lee, players, how, how do you think there is going to be a challenge for Ian with these players? Or do you think they're all instantly going to buy in to how he's going to be taking coaching? Do you think there may be resistance from some players or not? It was clearly a challenge Neil had when he took over from Harry Kuehl and from Kevin Nolan. Um, knowing the group as I do, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Um, they're a good group of lads. Um, care about the club. I mean, if you remember, I mean, people questioned. I mean, it was a few weeks ago, wasn't it, where we was questioning whether they were playing for the manager. You look at the two comebacks against Boreham Wood and Yeovil. You know the way they come back, and then obviously they went and beat Yeovil two 0 at the weekend. I, I always said I've got no concerns about that dressing room. Whatsoever. I think they're a good group of lads. I think they understand the responsibility of wearing the shirt. And I don't foresee them downing tools, so to speak. Um, I think one of them, I think one or two of them will be disappointed the manager has gone because I know he was highly thought of by by uh, many of the players. Um, but I don't foresee that um, obscuring their. Um, obligation to to play football for Notts County. I think they will put, you know, anything that they may have disappointments, whatever, aside, and that they will they will play to the best of their ability. I it's I it I, I just don't foresee that happening. There's too many good characters in that dressing room in terms of the likes of your Doyles, your Reeves, um, your Jimmy O'Brien's, um, moaners like they are some of them. Um but I certainly don't foresee them um you know, turning up and saying, I'm, I'm not having it today. They're just, they're just not that kind of group. You know, same with Conor Rawlinson and your Ben Turners. That they'll, they'll come out and they'll perform to the best of their ability. I have absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. Beth, what, what's the new head coach got to do in the next week or so? Um, G up the players, give them confidence. I think he... By all means, sounds, uh, from what I've heard, like a good man-manager. Um, and I think it's quite clear, like Lee said, that the squad that we have are good people and respond well to a good player environment. Um, and if that's something that you know Ian values as much as, as Ardley has, then that will continue. I think as players, when a new manager comes in, um, you can say what you like, but the new manager has the same goals as you. You want to play football. It is your job. I don't think, I don't think I'll have a problem there. Um, yeah, I think he's just got to put that arm around each player, have those conversations, um, how difficult they might be. You know, there will be some disappointment. People got on with the manager and things, but they, I think ultimately they're going to accept it and um, they'll buy into the manager, especially if he's a hands-on uh, coach. He quite likes to be out on the field and I think he's got to instil that level of support um, immediately for success, they, they've got to buy into his his idea of success for for the club to succeed. Yeah, Les, he's got to get to the lads on the front foot, um, um, going out onto that pitch and and with an attitude of we're going to steamroller this team. He's got to find um, a combination up front. Uh, that's going to be a threat in the 18-yard box um, and um, that we make more chances um, and more shots on goal. Um, and then I think the rest will follow. I think we'll then start to score goals and more confidence will come back into the group. Lee, um, quick, oh, go through a few more points. Um, uh, Luke Beardsley, I think we have to be open-minded. As fans, we remember old owners and what didn't work. But for these new owners, it was a fresh slate. Uh, Steve Cartwright, well, I agree you want it now. If it doesn't happen, I don't think we will get out. Look at Wrexham, Scott Bell. Good point, Paul. Real danger. The players will have a show us your medals attitude. 
Um, what sort of tweaks do you think are needed, Lee, um, to get a bit more out or, you know, get four or five wins on the spin rather than win two, draw one, that sort of scenario? Can it be done? You always end these shows with these questions that absolutely fry me. Um... Well, yeah, I've, got, I've got a combination of me, Andrew Neil. Piers Morgan. Um, and well, Jeremy... Before you ask these questions, can you do a Piers Morgan and walk off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made my life a lot easier. Um, yeah, what yeah, you you do? Hey, right, levity. Good shot. Tell you what, we'll tell people. We'll tell people about how you miss the scoop of who the next manager is. Right, because it's funny. Okay, so last night, obviously, none of us, none of us had a clue who the manager or head coach was. The closest we got was I thought it might be head coach. And that, that was about the limit of our entire collective coach. So this morning, um, I get uh, I get a message from an Ots fan saying, um, I've got a random message um, that says the initials of the new manager are IB. And that he's, man he's an Englishman and he's managed in a top European league. And so, you know, I thought, yeah, right out. So I'm thinking, I be, you know, I've got my son on it. It's not, you know, it ain't going to be in Barraclough, is it? Leaving Northern Ireland on the eve of them playing Italy, right? And Barra would have rung me anyway. So it, it's not him. And I'm, I'm Googling, you know, English managers abroad list. Any of them got the initials I be. Couldn't find it couldn't find any. Harry comes in. Oh, it's so-and-so. Right. Okay. So then Beth sends me a message. She said, did you get a message? I says, well, no. I got a second and one. She says, well, I got a message saying the manager's IB and played in a, a foreign league, managed in a, in a foreign league abroad. So I then ring you, don't I? And I ring you. I says, hey, did you get a direct message? And you go, I've not thought. Because this was the, the message had come through at midnight the previous night. He said, I've not looked. I said, we'll have a look. And you've gone, oh, ruddy hell. I've got a message saying the next manager, his initials are IB, and he's played abroad. I've only just seen it now. Scoop. Oh, wow, I was asleep. Well, wow, you think people are going to text me, mate? I'm just got to... <laughs> The problem is with this Twitter thing as well. I mean, the amount of emails and nonsense DMs and things like that. You get so much nonsense sent through to you. A lot of it, you know, you just think, ah, oh, well, just cast that to one side. So I turned my DMs off at one stage. I was getting that much, that much. So when uh, when I woke up and saw it this morning, because I was like, oh, I don't believe it. But of course, you know, once in a while you do get those those messages. But um, yeah, so DMs, DMs are now DMs are now open. But. Um, <laughs> Sources, but a mystery fan watching us last night had it on the nail, had it on the nail. So fair play. Oh, probably now spark a massive leap with Nick Richardson in the club or whatever. But it's all a bit of jest and all a bit of fun. But interesting. So getting back, I, I forgot what my question was to you, but we'll make this a. It was something what tweaks. What tweaks has the manager got to do about the yeah. about the team? Um. Well, I can't see how he's going to make... I mean, everyone keeps complaining about the legs in midfield. I don't see how he's going to make anybody run faster. So, um, I, I generally don't know. Carl Wooden's going to have to start. I think he's going to have to play his strongest team on Saturday. I think Carl Wooden's going to have to start. Enzio's going to have to start. Um, I'm intrigued to see what formation he'll play. I, I always felt that Knox's formation, the best formation this season was 4-2-3-1. Which was Doyle and Reeves holding. Um, Rodriguez is the ten. Um, Enzio and Roberts. Obviously, Roberts isn't fit, but I thought that was always the best formation. But you're looking at that now, and you think, oh, okay, if Rodriguez plays as a ten and Enzio plays as a, on the right, who plays on the left? Or you know, even if you switch Enzio, who's the who's going to be the winger? There isn't one in there. So can you play that formation? Four four two. Uh, um. I think he'll keep the defence the same. I don't see any real problems there. I think what he's got to try to do is try and get a tune out of the attack in the final third of the pitch. And again, I'm not sure there's enough options there. Um, 
to do it. I'm, you know, I'm I'm scrabbling around now. What does he do? Play Wooten and Effie on? Does he go four three three and put Wooten, Enzio on the right, uh, Knowles on the left, and then play a midfield three of Rodriguez, uh, Doyle, and Reeves? I mean, these are the questions that need answering, and I'm I'm just not sure. I'm fascinated to see how he does it, but. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it. You, you, once you start to go through the options, you actually start to think, actually, they're quite limited, you know, in terms of what you would expect from a team that, that wants to score goals. You know, Effiong's come in, not done it. Knowles has come in, not done it. Uh, Eli's come in and not do it. So, you know, I, I think I'm just going to be really interested to see the kind of formation and, and how he tries to unlock it with the players that he's got because it's it's... You know, it, it looks a, a big challenge. A, a great question. Nick Goring, do you think the new head coach will have a keeper on the bench on Saturday? Beth? <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to have a go? Is Luke Pilling going to no be idea. on the bench? <laughs> I, I don't know what his plan's going to be. Same as Lee said, I don't... Has she gone again? Um, I'm probably going to say yes. Um, but I I don't know. I can't, can't predict. We'll come back in a minute when you're internet. Then I don't know who is going to choose the information. And I can't, I can't figure out how he's going to. Okay, we'll come back to you in a minute, Beth. Les. Yeah, Max, yeah Les. Um, Central up top, I'm not. Who knows? Honestly, who knows? I think, I think the gist there, there is that Beth, despite being our tactical and formation queen of tactics, hasn't got a clue. Uh, Leslie, Leslie, what about, obviously you can't play Saturday, but the answer here has obviously got to be the Magpie Circle sponsored. Oh, here we go. Louis <laughs> Knight. Oh, oh, dear. I'm going to stop coming on this show. <laughs> <laughs> what what should he play or what's the question I'm, about, I'm, I'm in jest do, do you see him playing a slightly younger lineup or not i think he'll how many players can form the squad on saturday how many subs can you have don't know seven <laughs> i i, I I think he'll use it as a means of uh, he'll want to win the game. He'll he'll probably initially go out with what he thinks is probably the strongest team. For, he said he's been studying the the videos over the last couple of days of the matches, so he'll pick the strongest team and he'll but he'll want to see everybody um, uh, in, in a match situation. That's uh, that's the only way you get to know uh, things about your players. It's um, uh, and it's a strange one because there's no crowd in there as well because that's uh, that's another problem. But um, no, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, it, it, you know he's coming today. Um, what can he do today? Not a great deal. Tomorrow a short training session, so not a lot of changes can be made. He's probably going to go out. Uh, go out. I, I would I would think somewhere along the line he'll want to attack a little bit more. We're playing Hornchurch, aren't we? And um, with due respect to them, we, we should be able to put some pressure on them. Um, and and I'd like to see it happen early, get on the front foot right early in the game. And who knows, if once you start scoring goals early in the game, it's amazing how um, performance has improved, confidence improves. Um, when games, and we've had a lot of games this season where it's been nil-nil or one goal in it and and you 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 frightened really of making a mistake and instead of being on that front foot so i think that will be key in his thinking and get to get that into the players that we're going to go out and we're going to beat these and we're going to win comfortably uh, i yeah, think we'll... they'll be right up for it though they'll be right up for it horn church you know mark stimson yeah he's 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 a wily old fox i think um I mean, they've had so long to prepare for this game. And I can imagine in that Hornchurch dressing room, what's happened this week, they'll be going, hey, got a chance here. 
was smelling blood. And I think that's what they're going to have to guard against. I mean, listen, man for man, Notts County got a far better squad, far better team. Um, but I would just be a little bit cautious that they that I think they'll come out and, and have a right go. And I think yeah. it's it's vitally important, as Les says, I think that Notts have got to try and get out and get on the front foot early doors. Yeah, and, and I do think it's genuinely very important for um, our younger generation of fans. You know, I've been fortunate enough to see Notts play and win at Wembley, as has Les. Um, great days. Um, you know, the reality is um, we've not been to Wembley for quite a while now. And, you know, probably anyone up to the age of 30, 35 hasn't seen Notts at Wembley. And with supporters being allowed into the stadium, I, I, it may only be the trophy, but it's a big deal for our fan base to be able to make a trip to London and go into Wembley Stadium and see Notts County play there. So I get it is actually important. It is actually important. Perhaps in the longer term scheme of things, in terms of promotion or not this year, maybe it's not. But, you know, fans, emotion, real enjoyment, something to savour for, you know, for the rest of your lives. Your first trip to Wembley to see Notts play is always something that will live for you for, for, forevermore. Um, we've got a few other fans coming out with the old uh, tactical stuff now. Trevor Robinson, I have read that Ian likes to play a 4-3-3. Um, uh, Pythagoram, 4-1-4-1, really favour, just one holding midfielder, therefore enhancing the midfield further up. I've no idea what all this means, but anyway. Uh, David Whitco asked Kyle to fall back deeper like Kane and play two fast runners going past Kyle like Knight and Knowles. Look, we, we shall see. Um, I think we've lost Beth. She's having a few problems um, with her internet connection. Um, gentlemen, thank you very, very much indeed, as always, for tonight. It's been a busy old week. Um, you know, in theory, I'm supposed to uh, be chairman of an international global sports communication consultancy that, believe it or not, has been ranked as one of the 10 biggest in the world. I've got to say, I feel more knackered doing these ruddy shows this week than you do running that. However, however, so thank you very much. Um, the check for both of you and Beth is definitely not in the post, it's all voluntary. <laughs> thank you very much. We may pay for a haircut for you, Lee. Um, well, I've just got another yeah, question. I, 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 listen, I want you, given this Sky Sports yellow style ticker bar that we, we keeps going across the bottom of the screen, you now have to put on, you know, some kind of Jim White tribute act and wear some yellow. <laughs> that's what, that's, <laughs> that's what you've got to do next week, mate. You've got to do that. Ask you got, there's got to be some form of yellow... A yellow shirt or a yellow tie, yellow cap. Shall we get a yellow suit made? What about that? Oh, up that with a black magpie on the back. How about that? That'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, uh, well, for those of us watching it live, thanks to Jurgen, uh, we now know it is England 3 San Marino 0. Clearly, we're doing <laughs> marginally, marginally better than the under 21s who managed to lose to Switzerland earlier today. So, um, Gentlemen, thank you ever so much indeed. Um, it goes without saying, we all wish Ian Burchnell and his new team of people uh, every success. Um, of course, we all get emotional. We all get passionate about it. Um, it has been a quite a momentous few days, but we have a new manager or new head coach, I should say. I'm sure we will all get behind him. And I'm sure we're all going to be doing everything possible to help Ian help the players get to Wembley on Saturday and then get to the promised land of the Football League at the end of this season. Les and Lee, thank you very much. Good night.